Welcome! My name is Tomáš Knapp. I'm a software architect at Semantic of Company and would like to introduce you Unified Views. Unified Views is a tool for management of data processing tasks with the focus on RDF and linked data processing. Unified Views provides user interface where you can define, adjust, monitor, debug or schedule your data processing tasks and provides also backend for executing these data processing tasks. Unified Views is available either under a commercial license as part of Coolbarty Semantic Integrator product or also available as an open source product under a combination of GPL and lesser GPL licenses. Each pipeline contains certain plugins, data processing units or simply DPUs, which are of three main types. So we distinguish extractors, which are red, transformers, which are violet, and loaders, which are green. The basic idea is that extractors obtain certain data from external systems, like for example from certain sparkling point or relational database or just a remote file store and then store such data to the internal unified views working store. And then transformers take the data from this unified views working store, do some transformation, curation, quality assessment and again output the data to the unified views working store and at the end there are loaders which take the data from the Unified Views Working Store and load the curated, adjusted, transformed data to some external systems where they are available for further use. Each DPU may consume certain inputs, execute certain business logic and produce certain outputs. You may also easily configure the DPU so you may either double click the DPU or click on this show detail icon to actually configure the DPU. So you can see the custom configuration dialog provided by the DPU developer. And if you are not familiar with all the configuration parameters like host, extraction service path, etc., you can always see the about tab, which I mean, explains the basic idea of the DPU. It explains all the configuration parameters of the DPU and also outlines all the inputs which are expected by the DPU and all the outputs which may be produced by the DPU. Data flows between DPUs are depicted by these arrows. So for example in this case there is a DPU, Sparkle Endpoint Extractor, which extracts certain RDF triples from external Sparkle Endpoint and stores such triples in the output data unit called Output and such data is then consumed by Poolparty Extractor via its RDF input data unit. Certain DPUs, like for example Poolparty Extractor, may actually support more input data units. So in this case there is a need to define the mappings between the outputs produced by the Sparkle Endpoint Extractor in this case and the inputs of this DPU. And you can do that by clicking on the edge, clicking on Edit Edge Mapping, and there you can define the mappings so in this case, I mean the mapping is between output and RDF input. It is worth mentioning that Unified Views supports more types of data units. So you may exchange RDF triples or RDF graphs between the DPUs, but you may also exchange files or you may also exchange relational tables. So far we were discussing basic concepts of Unified Views now I would like to describe this particular pipeline so that you can get a better idea about the use cases for which Unified Views may be used and we will also see the nice cooperation between Unified Views and Pool Party Semantic Suite. So the idea of our use case is as follows. Say we have lots of documents which we want to make searchable in a facilitated search based on certain taxonomy. In this case we would like to use World Bank Topical Taxonomy. So this is the World Bank Topical Taxonomy maintained in Pool Party Thesaurus Manager. So you can see that it contains lots of topics or SCOS concepts if you want. And you can browse any topic, like for example, you can click on climate change to get further information about that topic, like preferred label, narrower concepts, reality concepts. And you can also browse the taxonomy further to get information about more particular concepts like energy and climate change, for example. So this is the taxonomy which is used to annotate input documents we have. 
So this is the end search application where we can see the facets on the left side. So here you can see the World Bank topics, World Bank facets, and we can search for the World Bank topics. So for example, we can search for climate, and as you can see, you get suggestions which are actually coming from this taxonomy you saw before. So we can select climate change, and as a result, the documents are filtered so that they contain only those which are connected to this topic climate change. We can also add a geolocation facet if we want. So for example, we can just display documents from Western Africa. And yeah, so we can see the documents which satisfy these facets. And we can click on any document to get abstract of the document, full text of the document, and also some suggestions for similar documents. And you can also see the topics from the World Bank taxonomy which are linked to this document. So that is basically the search application we would like to have at the end. Now let's return back to our pipeline to explain how particle DPUs contribute to our search application use case. So the documents are extracted from MarkLogic data store, which actually provides Sparkle endpoint. So we use the Sparkle endpoint extractor. And if we open the configuration, we can see that okay, we define certain Sparkle endpoint URL, we define certain authentication, and we also define certain query, which should get the data from this data store. Such data outputted by Sparkle Endpoint Extractor is then saved in the output data unit called Output and feed it to pool party annotator, which annotates the input documents using the World Bank topic taxonomy as you saw before. So if you look into the configuration, uh, we can see that it defines to which pull part the annotation service it should connect and it also defines the project ID which is the project containing the World Bank topic or taxonomy, so the definition of the taxonomy. The annotations outputted by pull part the annotator are then saved in the RDF output data unit. So it basically contains RDF triples which represent information about the concepts and in which documents they appear. Such annotations obtained by this branch are then merged in the RDF graph merger with the results of the upper branch, which basically contains just the World Bank Topical Taxonomy. So this files download, downloads the World Bank Topical Taxonomy from certain location, and this DPU just converts the downloaded ontology to the RDF representation. So the data outputted by the RDF graph manager basically contains the annotations on one side and also the full bank topical taxonomy. It is then feeded to Sparkle Construct Executor, which prepares such RDF data for the full party graph search application. So if we open this DPU, we can see that it basically refines the data so that they satisfy the form expected by the search application. And finally, the refined data is then loaded via this files upload to certain remote file location. In this case, it is just optmark logic folder on that server. I would like to also show you how easy it is to actually extend existing pipeline with further DPUs. So suppose that you would like to directly load the results of this Sparkle Construct Executor to certain Sparkle endpoint so that it can be directly used by the graph search application. So in this case, what I can do is that I can search for the uh, for the loader and I can just drag and drop the loader 
put it on the proper location in the pipeline define the data flow in this case you can see that the data flow the arrow depicting the data flow is red which means that I have to manually define the mappings so I say okay so output from the Spark executor should map to the RDF input of the loader and now I can see that I adjusted the pipeline and the output from the Sparkle construct executor then goes not just to the, to the folder defined in this file upload DPU but it goes also to the Sparkle endpoint which I have to for the configure here so far we are discussing this particular unified use use case and this particular pipeline realizing the use case and now let me close the pipeline and I would like to briefly show you which action you can actually do with, with the pipeline so here we have our MarkLogic webinar demo pipeline so what you can do that you can run the pipeline you can debug the pipeline the difference between running the pipeline and debugging the pipeline is that if you debug the pipeline you can see the intermediate results as produced by the by the DPUs on the pipeline and you can also query these intermediate results so you can query the RDF data consumed or produced by DPUs on the pipeline furthermore you can also schedule the pipeline so if I click here a dialog appears where I can actually define that this pipeline should run every certain amount of time like every week or every month and I can also define that I would like to get notifications when there is for example a certain issue with the pipeline and I can get the notifications either instantly when the pipeline finishes or I can also get uh, daily bulk reports for all my pipelines furthermore I can also copy the pipeline to actually start with this copied version I can also see the detail of the pipeline of course and I can also delete the pipeline now let's move to the DPU templates menu item which actually shows all the DPUs which are available in the system so you can click on any DPU to get some basic information about the DPU you can also get the default configuration of the DPU and what you can do is that you can easily customize this default configuration so I can just click copy and change the name of my customized extractor from Spark endpoint and I can also for example adjust the query in the configuration save it and then anytime I use this DPU on the pipeline it will be pre-configured with this configuration as being default you can also easily import new DPUs to the system so I can just click create DPU template and select a certain jar file from the system which should be imported to unified views and then it will appear in this list of DPUs execution monitor of unified views shows the list of executions for each execution you can see the status you can also see when it was started the duration and some other attributes if I click on set an execution I can get basic events which happened on the pipeline so for example I can see that certain DPU started certain DPU was finished etc etc I can also see some detailed information in the log tab if I'm interested in so thanks for watching hopefully you got better idea of what unified views can do for you and how unified views can be helpful especially together with the pool party semantic suite